Trina here with another 10 minute template transformation. Well, almost 10 minutes. So maybe it was more like an hour this time, but it's all good because this comic book template from David Lindenberg really was fun, fun, fun to work with. And it's given me so many more creative ideas for other interactions I can build with his design. So for this template transformation, I'm going from a comic book theme to a little more of a professional or serious theme. And it really was just as easy as swapping out colors, fonts, and graphics. Um, the real trick of this was that a lot of the graphics were hidden in the states. So I needed to make sure that every object I checked its states. And if I needed to make out an image swap, I did. But for the most part, the real power of this app is in all of those states, variables, and triggers. So that's what I'm going to focus on in this video. Let's get started. Here's my project file. You'll notice in story view that I actually have two scenes. One is my reworked version, which is still a work in progress. And one is David's source file. So when I started out, I simply built my project on the back of David's design. I did it this way so that I wouldn't have to recreate all of his variables and triggers. I wanted to preserve as much of that as possible to save myself some work. Speaking of variables and triggers, most of the heavy lifting in this interaction really occurs on slides two and three. On slide two, we have 16 different options to choose from, four options spread across each of four categories. So when a learner clicks to select an option, their choice is saved in the placeholder spot here, the one with the question mark. The individual answer options are simply a normal state and a hover state. That's pretty simple. But over here in the triggers panel, you see that each of these buttons when clicked triggers a number variable. You're going to want to make note of this because this is going to come into play in just a second. But for now, let's take a closer look at the placeholder spot. So the placeholder has five states, a normal state, which is the question mark, plus four more states to represent each of the four options for the category. But how do we get the user selection from here to be saved over here? Let's walk through those steps right now. Here's one of the categories I've already transitioned from David's design to mine. I'm selecting this placeholder object, and I can see on the timeline that it's called Strength Choice 1. Now, I could go in and rename this to something that's more relevant for my design, but I'm in transition. I think for our purposes, I'm just going to leave it as is. In the Triggers panel, um, let's go ahead and create a new trigger to change the state of the strength choice one object. In the action dropdown, I'm selecting change state of, and the object I'm changing is strength choice one. Let's change that to state Hulk, which is now number one in my design, and when variable changes. And that variable that's changing is the strength variable. Now let's just leave it at that and see what happens. I'll preview this slide real quickly and we'll see that when I click on one, it changes the placeholder to one, which is just what I wanted. But if I change my mind and decide to select two, which is formerly She-Hulk, the placeholder doesn't change. So that's not really working. That's because I needed to specify some conditions for this trigger. So let's go back into the triggers panel and we're gonna select the change state trigger for the placeholder. And let's edit that trigger and then click the Show Conditions button. And where we went wrong before is that we told Storyline just to change the state when the variable changes, and it did that. But that means we'll need, we'll uh, get the same state change to number one, regardless of which option the user chooses. So to tell Storyline that we want a specific change to occur, we're going to need to add a specific condition that says if the strength variable is equal to the value of one, change it to this. If it's equal to the value of two, change it to that, and so on and so forth. That's where that trigger to change number one's value to one when the user clicks is coming into play. So before we preview, let's just quickly fix the rest of the broken triggers that make up this category. I'll just select the trigger, click the edit button, and choose the strength choice one object. And you'll see all the other attributes here carried over beautifully from David's source file. So I'm just going to say OK. Now that I've got all of these fixed, let's do a quick preview to check our work. Now when I click on uh, one, it changes the state of my placeholder to one, which is great. And if I change my mind and I click two, it changes it again, and so on and so forth. So I will admit, one of the caveats when repurposing a more complex interaction 
is that you can't just rename the object states and existing variables. So to repurpose these, you're really going to need to spend some time up front getting acquainted with the inner workings of the original design. But that's one of the reasons why I kept David's project in a separate scene in my project. It was just easy to quickly reference it as I went along. And in just about 10 minutes, I was able to update all of these triggers and get this interaction into some good working order. And another 10 minutes or so, I'll have all of these other images updated. I think that's a heck of a lot faster than creating this from scratch, don't you? Thanks for watching. I will see you again next time when we do another 10 minute template transformation.